Welcome everybody. I'd like to give the last application in this uh, sequence of videos on applications. We're going to see how to find the largest disk inscribed inside a polygon using linear programming. So P on the left is our polygon. And we're trying to find the largest disk that we can fit inside it. So here's our disk. And imagine that you can move it around inside the polygon and you can make it bigger. And how do you find the center and the radius of the largest disk that fits inside this, this polygon? Okay, so we're going to think of our polygon as a union of lines. And k of the lines are going to be supporting, k, k of the lines are going to, let's see, um, be bounding the disk from below. So these k are going to be bounding the disk from below. And then the remaining lines from k plus 1 to n are going to be bounding the disk from above. And it's not too hard to figure out whether a line is, is going to bound from below or for above or from above. So we'll just pretend that, that we know that already. And now our task, so each line is described. Um, so line i has an equation, which is given by y equals aix plus bi. So ai is a slope of the ith line, and bi is the y-intercept of the ith line. OK. And we want to find the center, S1, S2, and the radius R of this largest disk that can fit inside. OK. So for the moment, we're just going to pretend that there's a single line. So pretend we're only looking at the ith line. We're going to find an equation for the distance from any given center to that line. All right, and then once we have an equation for this distance, then we'll be able to put a bound on the radius, right? The, the optimal radius will be such that all of these distances are not exceeded. Because if you exceed this distance, if your radius exceeds this distance, then you go outside the polygon, okay? So here's our center point right there. And this is our ith line. Li given by y equals aix plus bi. We want to find an equation for this distance, which I'll call d. All right. We know this distance in red. That's just, just the uh, discrepancy between the y-coordinates. So the y-coordinate of the top point is S2. And the y-coordinate of the bottom point on that red light segment is AI S1. That's AI times the x-coordinate um, plus BI. So I, I subtract BI because I'm looking at the, at the difference between those two y-coordinates. For the moment, pretend that our center point is above um, the line. So you were working at, looking at one of these lines from L1 up to LK that bounds our, our uh, disk from below. So, so this distance is actually positive because the center point is above the line. All right. So how do I find an equation for D? I'm going to set up similar triangles. Our book doesn't show all these steps, and it took me a while to, to figure out. So that's why I'm doing that together with you. I'm going to set up similar triangles. The, um, I have a right triangle in blue, red, and black. Here's a right triangle. It's going to be similar to this right triangle. And the blue side is, you know, the longer leg. So that's going to correspond to this segment in the small triangle. And the red side is the hypotenuse. 
So the red side is going to correspond to this hypotenuse right there. OK. So do you see these two similar triangles? This large triangle is similar to this triangle with the blue longer leg corresponding to the blue longer leg and the red hypotenuse corresponding to the red hypotenuse. And so this gives, an this gives us an equation, you know, the longer leg D, the distance we care about, divided by the length of the hypotenuse is equal to Then I need to take the ratio of the blue side of the smaller triangle divided by the red side of the smaller triangle. Okay. I'm not going to give you the exact lengths of the smaller triangle, but I'm going to give you um, proportionate lengths of the smaller triangle using the slope. So the slope of this line is AI. So that means if I were to take one step to the right, then the height at which I increase is AI, okay? So one and AI are not proportionate to those exact lengths on this figure. They're not exactly equal to those lengths as drawn in this figure, but they're proportionate to them, okay? Because one step to the right increases my height by AI when I'm on a line of slope AI. So now, what is this red length? Okay, let me, let me draw one in blue. What is this shorter red length, this hypotenuse red length right there? Well, we can use the uh, Pythagorean theorem. It's equal to the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus ai squared. All right. So I can now fill in this equation. The large blue divided by the red, uh, shoot, <laughs> the distance D divided by uh, the longer, <laughs> the large YouTube fail. All right, the, the long leg D divided by the long hypotenuse S2 minus AI S1 minus BI is equal to the shorter long leg <laughs> one divided by the shorter hypotenuse. And now we can just cross multiply to get an equation for this distance D that we care about. So D is just equal to S2 minus AI S1 minus BI divided by that square root. All right. So here's an equation for that distance. Questions? All right. So one other comment is that um, this distance more precisely is equal to the absolute value. And um, this expression right here is positive if the center point is above the line and negative if the center point is below the line. So we can now describe our linear program. Um, we're going to maximize the radius of our ball subject to all the lines below, the radius of the ball can't exceed the distance to the line. Otherwise, our ball would pop outside of the polygon. Okay. For um, the lines that are above, bounding the polygon from above, you know, this expression is negative. So you need to multiply through by negative one and it turns out you get this constraint. Okay, so zooming in, we're, we're solving this linear program. Our variables are the radius r and the center point coordinates, s1, the x-coordinate, s2, the y-coordinate. And then each of these constraints says that the ball doesn't exceed the distance to the corresponding line. So if r and the center point coordinates s1 and s2 are our variables, you know, ai's and the bi's, those are just constants that appear in our constraints. 
two comments to end. You can do this in n-dimensional Euclidean space. So you can have a polytope and you can find the largest sphere inside your polytope. A related problem would be given a, a polygon, find the smallest disk that contains that polygon. It turns out you can't set that up as a linear program. I, I'm trusting our book on this. Um, you can try it and, and maybe see why you fail. I don't really know why you, you fail. You can set it up as a convex problem, which can still be efficiently solved, just not as easily as linear problems. Section 8.7 of Matthew Second Gardner talks about convex optimization. Questions? Thanks.